Well, good morning, Victory Church. It is a great day to be in the house of God today. It's so good to be here. I am pleased to uh, give you a good report on Pastor Ron. His surgery went well. He is doing great. He is a man of God, and he is a man of faith. He is strong in his faith, and he's doing awesome, and he may be coming home today. Yeah, so that is awesome. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord for that. Well, I'm just going to start with prayer, and then we'll get going. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, this day that you have made. We thank you for this time that we have here together, Lord. And I'm asking you that you would use me, spirit, soul, and body, to bring the message. And I ask that you would uh, give us all hearers. Ears to hear from heaven today. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place in Jesus' name. Well, as Cam was saying, we are starting a new series today, Check Yes or No. Maybe this season we are dealing with some overloaded commitments. This year in 2024, the year of more, you want to make sure that you are saying yes to the right things and no to the not so good things. Have you ever had to deal with an overloaded commitments? Uh, maybe it's time to do an inventory of what and who you've committed to or what you're about to commit to in the new year. So as I'm sharing with you today, and as we get into God's word, I encourage you, if you have your phone with you, if you've got a piece of paper, take some notes and just make a list. You can make a list and put check yes in the left column and make a list and put check no in the right column. And as I'm speaking, and as God is speaking through me, I believe he will confirm some things to say yes to, and the things to say no to. Does it take more work to say yes, or does it take more work to say no? Today we're going to decide what to say yes to, and what to say no to. There are things that you need to say no to that may not be bad but aren't necessarily beneficial to where God is calling you to. To where God is calling your family, to where he's calling your friendships, to where he's calling your career. Because he wants to use even that for his glory and his honor. Why? So that you can be blessed to be a blessing. A common thing that happens at the beginning of a new year is that we see it as an opportunity, as a fresh start. We talked a little bit about that last week on New Year's resolutions. Uh, you know, we use, that can be a, an opportunity to uh, start, have a fresh start, a chance to say yes or no to people, things, and possibilities. So as we enter into a New Year commitments, there are promises that we've made in the past that we need to continue with. Some of the things that we say yes to will have a shelf life, and some of them are for life. Like marriage, for example. When we say, I do, the commitment is for as long as we are on this earth together. This is a lifetime commitment. We also understand that life is full of ups and downs. And there are conditions to that call. There are conditions to that commitment. There are also conditions to that covenant. Conditions in how we promise to treat and support one another on that journey. There are times when it is unsafe or unwise to remain committed in an unhealthy or abusive relationship. And it's in situations like this where we've had to say no. But God still has more for you. Praise the Lord. He's got other relationships for you. He's got other plans for you, good plans. His plans are to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in the future. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. His plans for you, if you don't know that verse, I encourage you to write it down. Learn, learn it, own it, speak it, because out of the mouth comes life and death. We talked about that last week in Proverbs 18.21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. I don't know about you, but I want to eat some good fruit this season. I see no of the rotten fruit. Maybe, the one thing, maybe one of the things that you need to say no to is those words that you've been speaking or tolerating over yourself or maybe over your family. Words like, I can't, I'm not good enough, words like, I'm not healthy. These are words that speak death, 
not life. We want to speak words of life. If you want to check yes, check yes to freedom. Check yes to new beginning. Check yes to receiving the blessings that God has for you in your life. As Camel had mentioned earlier, you can either be an umbrella or you can be a funnel. Are you a pastor of praise or are you an apostle of woe is me? God wants us to look up if we would receive all that he has for us. Hebrews 4.2 says to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We need to look at some of those small choices that we might be making, choices that you might think are insignificant. We need to recognize that sometimes it's the small things that are the big things. It's saying yes to smiling more. Maybe it's saying yes to holding hands, even if that's not your love language. And that wasn't my love language in the beginning, but uh, being with Cam now for 10 years, it's more my love language now than it was before. Maybe it's saying yes to Jesus in the morning, saying, Lord, I want to say yes to love. Lord, what does love demand of me today? I want to say yes to joy, for the joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah 8.10. So recite and rehearse what God's word says. For example, Psalm 118.24, Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And his mercies are made new every morning. Great is his faith and must praise Jesus. Fresh mercies every single day. I like it. That is a good thing to say yes to. So my challenge to you is this. Is it actually easier to say no than it is to say yes. Yes means, because yes comes with a commitment. Right? Yes comes with a commitment. Yes means I'm all in. Yes means I've got to stick it out through the highs and through the lows. Yes means I'm committed even when I don't feel like it. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen. Everybody say strengthen. To strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Emphasis on fully committed to him. In other words, saying, my word is my bond. Whatever happened to my word being my bond? Remember the handshake? Yeah, you shook a hand with somebody, that was it. It was a done deal. It was as good as a signed contract. When yes means I'm committed and I must follow through. Even when things don't go as planned, or when I don't feel like it, or when maybe something better comes along. To me, saying yes means I'm in it for the long haul. Through the ups and downs, the highs and the lows, to me saying yes means I'm committed to getting better instead of becoming bitter. Saying yes to me is not about convenience, it's about calling. So what does Jesus say when it comes to keeping our word? and making promises that we intend to keep. So let's take a look at what Jesus, what's saying yes looks like to Jesus. Let's look at the power of our tongue because we need to understand the weight of our words and how they affect the world around us. So if you brought your Bibles with you, if you've got your paper Bible or if you've got a digital Bible, can you all hold your Bibles up in the air? I don't even have my Bible with me. <laughs> it's in my briefcase. <laughs> but I'll make sure I got it with me next weekend right here on the table. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at uh, Matthew 5, verses 33 to 37, and I'm going to be reading from the message version, and it is titled, Empty Promises. So here we go. And don't say anything you don't mean. This counsel is embedded deep in our traditions. You only make things worse when you lay down a smokescreen of pious talk, saying, I'll pray for you, and never doing it, or saying, God be with you, and not meaning it. You don't make your words true by embellishing them with religious lace. In making your speech sound more religious, it becomes less true. Just say yes and no. When you manipulate words to get your own way, you go wrong. Okay, so let's, let's start with the first verse. And don't say anything you don't mean. Don't say anything you don't mean. So that brings us to our first point. Before you say yes, make sure you mean it. 
the NIV version says this, again, you have heard it that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill the Lord the vows you have made. What vows have you made? What commitments have you made? Can you think of a time when you said yes to something and you didn't follow through? Well, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 37, let your yes be yes and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. If you say to somebody you're going to be there at 3 o'clock, then you should be there at 3 o'clock. You know, or if something comes up, you know, at least give them a phone call or a text. But let your yes be yes and your no be no. Okay, so we'll back to Matthew 5. We're going to go to the next, another scripture in there, in that, in that portion. You don't make your words true by embellishing them with religious lace. So not long after I got born again, my mom told me that she was telling friends and family that I was religious. <laughs> and I was like, I tell her, I'm not religious. I'm a Christian. I would try to explain to her that Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. And I'm hoping that she's, she's by this now, it's been 12 years now, so I'm hoping she's getting it. James 1.27 in the NLT says, Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father, means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Christianity is not a man-made religion that gets in the way of people coming to know Jesus. Again, it's about relationship not religion. That brings us to our second point. Don't use religion as a cop-out. So many times I've heard people say, God told me to do or not to do something. Now, I know God speaks to people and he speaks us, uh, to us often. However, sometimes people will use God's word as a mean for decision-making. We need to seek wise counsel, godly counsel. Psalm 1, 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. We need to seek counsel from godly people, people that we know and that we trust. We also need to make sure that we look for confirmation. This is really important. Last week I shared with you a little bit of my story when I was injured at work. And uh, that injury left me unable to return back to my trade, which was welding. And then God took me to university. So how did, that, how did I get the confirmation that he was taking me to university? Well, the first thing that I did, of course, was I went to the Word of God. And I went to scriptures like Jeremiah 29 that says that he has a good plan for me. And, I, and that's what I'm saying. God's got a good plan for me. His plan is to prosper me, not to harm me. I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I just kept saying it and saying it and saying it over and over and over again. What was I doing? I was painting a new picture. I was developing the inner image of God in me, painting a picture of who God says I am through his word. But I still needed to get confirmation. So Kamala has her, uh, her own little house cleaning business. And at that time, she had a client that she had been working for for about a year. And she was cleaning in the office one day, after a year, and happens to look up, it was September of 2017, so it was about 10, 10 months after the injury had occurred. And I was, you know, it was a really long journey of physical healing and emotional healing through all of that. And then, and then the question is, what am I going to do? I'm a trades guy, it's all I've known is trades. So she's looking, she's cleaning this office one morning and looks on the wall and there's all these diplomas and certificates for a career counselor. So the lady she was working for, was that was her job. She had a business and she was a career planner and a career counselor. So Kamala tells her our story, my story, where we're at. And she's a Christian woman and, and says, well, I want to sow a seed into your life and gave me free career planning and counseling. It was a very extensive course. I mean, there was one-on-one -on -one meetings. There was a, 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 a whole bunch of questionnaires that I would go through. And at the end of that process, we came down to three things. A counselor, a social worker, and a fitness trainer. I'm like, fitness trainer, yeah, that's the one. I want to be that because I go to the gym. I like the gym and everything. Counselor, I knew that wasn't it, but then I had social worker and fitness training. 
So I had to do my part. I had to start digging in. I started phone calling uh, colleges and different things like that, right? I was looking at the Bible schools first, and I was going to the gyms and finding out about, about what it is to be a, a trainer. And I kept hitting the wall there with the training thing. Just kept hitting the wall, kept hitting the wall. And God started opening this door to university, and he told me, I don't want you in a Bible school. I need you to be in a regular school. And that was when I told you last week about my meeting with the, with the advisor. And I walked out of there and, and uh, didn't think I could do it. I went back to the Word and started meditating on other scriptures. that, that I, God gave Daniel knowledge and skill under the tree. He gave it to me. So then I said to God one day, well, if you're taking me down this path, I need you to turn something on in here. And uh, to get into that program, you don't just sign up and away you go. You have to actually be qualified, to be accepted into it. And they wanted me to write a 350-word essay, 350-word essay of why I wanted to do this and what led me to this. And I'm like, okay, well, I got hard at work and I can't go back there anymore. And I want to help people. I don't know how many words that is, but pretty sure 350. <laughs> so, I, so what do I do? I go to God. And I, and I said to him one morning, I got on my knees and I said, Lord, if you're really taking me down to this, this path, I need you to turn something on in my head. Maybe it's never been activated. Maybe it needs to be reactivated. And I was coming home one day, a couple days later, and I was thinking about this 350-word essay, and all of a sudden, the words just start flooding in. I could hardly wait to get home. I, I opened up the computer. I blew the dust off the computer first, and I opened it up and started typing. And, and by the end of the week, I had something. I, I gave it to Cam. She read it. She's crying. I'm like, okay, I think I got something here. And um, that's the, the, so that was one of the confirmations that God had given me to go to school. And there was, there's a lot more to that story, but for time's sake, I can't get into all of the details. But that was one of the things. So we need to see confirmation from God. And God uses people and different things to give us that confirmation. Run to the Word first, right? You know, and I thought uh, I was going to be a social worker. That's what I thought God was putting me in there for. And here I am standing here sharing the Word of God with you today. You know, uh, you know. Sometimes we don't. We think we have our own thoughts of what God is doing in our lives. We just the key is being obedient and listening to Him. Even if sometimes it doesn't make sense or we think that maybe this is what's going to look like, chances are it's probably not going to look like what you think, but it's going to be better. This is better, right, for me. And uh, so he wants to do that for you too. So if you are hearing from God, or I shouldn't even say if, when you are hearing from God, we want to make sure that what you are hearing does not go against the Word of God. Holy Spirit will never tell you to do something that goes against the Word of God. Never. I was talking to a friend, this is a few years ago now, and he was telling me that God had told him to stop going to church so that he could be with his family on Sundays. <clears throat> well, Hebrews, I knew, I knew what the Bible said about that. Hebrews 10.25 says you should not stay away from the church meetings as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as you say the, see the day coming. So there are times when a person is not even open to opinion because the decision has already been made. And that was the case with this fellow. They've made their case and now apparently it's not their decision anymore, it's God's. They used the trump card and head down an unhealthy path. So now I can choose to challenge the source or I can remain silent. The question is, do I have permission to speak into their lives? But instead of hitting them over the head with a Bible, I used to do that a lot when I was in the beginning, very zealous, very passionate guy. <laughs> You've got to read the Word, and God's worked on me a lot in that area. We need to love them. Love listens. We've got two of these and one of these. All right? Maybe they're still working it out. Maybe they're trying to figure it out. Maybe they aren't completely wrong, and there's something there. And you can help them. They could be just looking for confirmation, and maybe you're the one that God is going to use to give it to them. Proverbs 16.9 says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. He or she may have a good plan, but just needs some direction. Maybe some coaching, some wisdom along the way. Sometimes, though, it does seem that there's no point because they've already built up their own case, their own reasoning, and have clearly made up their minds. But if I, convince, if I can convince them of one thing, then someone else can convince them of something else. 
But my prayer is that that person or those people truly hear from God and recognize his voice and not the voice of another. So it's important that we know when God is telling us to say yes and when he is telling us to say no. Ultimately, we need to go to the source. We need to go to God's word. We need to align ourselves with God's will and his way. Isaiah 59 says his ways are higher than our ways. He's given us his word so we can learn his ways, to learn how to live in his higher ways. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Sometimes I miss that one. <laughs> but in all of our ways, not some of them, we acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. You know, it's hard sometimes when you know what you want to say yes to and God says, wait. It takes a lot of trust to just continue to pray and wait. Trusting and waiting. That the Lord's got that right person for you. He's got that right job for you. It's still part of the vision. The, but part of the trust and learning is waiting. So we're going to go back to Matthew 5, verse 37. And it says, just say yes and no. When you manipulate words to get your own way, you go wrong. The NIV, the NIV version says, all you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. This brings us to our third point. Say yes or say no, but don't manipulate. Our takeaway here is just say yes or no, but check one. Sometimes we're so undecisive, or we think we know what we're checking, but we are totally missing the mark. The definition of sin is actually an archery term, and it means to miss the mark. Sometimes we don't even know what box to check. We don't know what we're aiming at. But one thing I know that I know for sure is our aim should always be higher. Our aim should always be Jesus. So imagine if we said yes to freedom, yes to healing, yes to blessing, yes to breakthrough. The Lord has brought us here today in this time and in this place, and he is speaking to you in his word today. He is guiding you in what to do and what not to do. Maybe, may your yeses be yes, and your noes be no. Say yes to Jesus, say yes to healing, say yes to freedom, say no to anxiety, no to pain, no to self-doubt, no to fear. Say no to the pressures of this world. Say no to being conformed to the patterns of it, but be transformed. Say yes to the renewing of your mind. The Lord wants to remind you that he has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. That's First Timothy, or 2 Timothy 1.7. Say yes to that. Say yes to power. Say yes to love. Yes to a sound mind. For he is able to do above and beyond all that you could hope, imagine, or dream of. And according to his power within you, say yes to Jesus. Jesus knew the weight and the storms and the things that we would go through. None of this is a surprise to him. So as you move forward, anything that you're about to build in this lifetime, may it be built on the word of God. Because everything else is sinking sand. Jesus said the storms will come, but if your house is built on the rock, the word of God, it will stand. That's Matthew 7. When Peter had the revelation that Jesus was Lord, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, and not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. You can find that in Matthew 16. If you're going to build your relationships, if you're going to build your future, if you're going to build your yeses, 
may it be built on the revelation that Jesus is Lord. I encourage you, build it on a relationship with Jesus, not on religion. If you're here today and you don't have that relationship with Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to start building, to build on a solid foundation, a foundation of faith, not by your strength, but by his spirit, says the Lord. Paul, Paul said in Romans 10, 9, if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing that God the Father raised his son from the grave, you will be saved. But before you can go out and start changing the world, you've got to let God change your heart. Just let him in and let go, but let God. Would everybody please stand with me? Thank you. I'm going to lead you through a prayer, and we're going to do just that. We're going to let go, and we're going to let God. So with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, repeat after me, and say this with all your heart and loud enough that you can hear it with your own ears. Say, Dear Jesus, I am ready to let go. I am ready to say yes to you and say no to fear, no to anxiety, no to depression, no to religion. I say yes to a relationship with you. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose from the grave. I'm asking you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I'm turning from my ways and I'm turning to you. Fill me to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just stay in that moment right now with your eyes closed and your heads bowed. If you just prayed that prayer today for the first time, would you raise your hand up? Raise your hand to heaven. Thank you. And if you're here today and this was your comeback moment, just lift your hand up to the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, there's a party going on in heaven for every lost sheep, every every prodigal son. There is a party going up. <clears throat> if this was your comeback moment, let's give some praise to God in the house today. We are going to get into a posture of praise. We're going to be a funnel for the reign of heaven. And this is just the beginning. Turn to someone and say, this is just the beginning. God's got good things for you. All right. Okay, let's get our hands in the air, and let's worship our almighty God together. All right.